Now with Jessica's hair, I've pre-blow dried this um, because we want to cut this dry and I want to spend a little bit of time on the styling because a lot of it's really to do with the way the hair is styled. Um, so we've prepped the hair with the Luster Lock from Joyka and I'll just grab that to show you for those that don't know. Uh, we've prepped the hair with Luster Lock, which is this spray here. And this you shake really, really well, spray it in the hair and it protects against the heat and just gives us a really nice detangled uh, product to be able to go through the hair and blow dry it. Now because um, Jessica's hair is pre-lightened, it already has a lot of texture in here. So when I do put the curling irons in here, it's actually gonna hold for us because it's got a lot of texture in here. Now, I had a consultation with Jessica and what we're gonna be doing from a haircut point of view is something very simple and very salon friendly. You know, a 70s shape really doesn't need to be a tricky haircut. It's more where you take it shorter and where you leave it longer. Um, we decided to take a couple of inches off the base so we're going to be cutting roughly around that much off the bottom. So it's going to be so much more healthier. We want to put some layers in through the top as well because the hair is quite dry and wispy and broken. So we want it to be a lot healthier, but also to give us more volume and bounce. And then around the very, very front, we're going to take it shorter, roughly around the lip level and really just shape it around the front. So when we curl it away from the face, it gives us that volume. So really, the haircut's gonna be quite straightforward and simple, but I think it's gonna be a technique that you're gonna be able to easily, easily use in the salon. The reason why it looks great now is because obviously we've blow dried it, and with the Joico product, it just helps to make the hair look very healthy and obviously giving us that volume. Okay, so I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off with the back area. We're gonna start off with taking a center parting, right, all the way through the back, and then what we're gonna do is begin cutting the baseline because that will give me a guideline of where I want to cut the layers a little bit shorter. Um, I don't want to go extremely short with the layers, it doesn't need it, but it does need to be slightly shorter just so that the hair is healthy and in proportion, obviously giving us that volume that we want to create as well. A lot of people ask, do I cut hair normally wet? Do I cut normally hair dry? To be honest, lately I've been cutting hair dry uh, a lot because I get to see exactly what I'm creating as I'm cutting it rather than just waiting for the blow dry afterwards. Do I still use the same technique? I do. I still approach the hair technically because the technique is the foundation and really gives us that balance that we're looking for. I never just kind of pick up hair and cut and hope for the best. I think it's good to have a foundation, to have a technique so that you have structure to your shape, but also when the client comes back in two months time, you know exactly what you've created to re-trim and reshape it. By the way, I know a lot of you guys have lots of questions, so during this uh, demonstration, please ask as many questions as possible. Okay, so let's have some fun and let's work together on this. Okay, so firstly, before I cut the baseline, what's really important is to make sure Jessica's feet are together. Okay, if you cross your feet for a second, Jessica, what happens, the shoulders end up being slightly offset. Naturally, when she crosses her feet to the, from right to left, her shoulder is slightly higher on the left, low, right, and slightly lower on the left. So if I cut that straight and she puts her feet together, it'll end up being on an angle. Put your feet together for us. Always make sure her feet are together before you cut the baseline. In fact, do you mind standing up? I don't know if you want. I'm gonna get her to stand up. Uh, the reason being is because the baseline is hitting the chair and I don't want to cut the hair with it being elevated. I want it at zero elevation. And you can see how her previous haircut is slightly on an angle, as you can see, and very, very wispy from here on. So we've decided to go from about that length so it's going to be so much more healthier. Guys, thank you for joining us. And let us know where you're from. I'm seeing uh, a lot of comments, Rosalia, Wendy, I'm seeing a lot of you guys, so please let us know where you're from and it's a real pleasure to have you guys on. Okay, so we're gonna start working everything at one length and then working uh, blunt cutting and using my comb as a guideline to be able to cut that nice and square. And already, that looks so much healthier, okay? And it's, it's something that she hasn't done for a while, so we thought it'd be a good time to give her a good haircut and make the hair healthy. And hair, when the hair's cut freshly done, you know, it just looks so much healthier. 
And, and that's why I always encourage clients to come every six to eight weeks so that the hair is healthy, okay? You can see that that's much squarer than what it was before. And I always use the comb as my ruler, as my guide. Does that look square on the screen? Okay, so the next section we're gonna do is we're gonna take another diagonal forward section. We can take it quite big. As long as, long as I can see my guide, which I can, uh, we can then take it slightly bigger as we have. If you can't see your guideline, you wanna take smaller sections so that you can see your guide. The guideline is key because that's what's giving you the foundation to work towards and to make sure that you're not cutting it shorter or leaving it longer than what you've established with the first haircut. Okay, next haircut, next section we're doing, we're combing everything nice and flat. All right, we can see the guideline there. We use the comb, making sure it's all flat and then working exactly at the same guideline and cutting that square. A lot of, some people cut it round. I don't really cut the baseline. I, I never actually cut it round. I'm always loving that square shape, that square finish, because it just, for me, it looks more flattering. But again, that's not a right or wrong thing. So if you do like rounding it, or if your clients like rounding it, keep your head right still, that's cool too. But generally speaking, I always cut the baseline nice and square because it's more flattering for me and the way I, I feel like the hair sits. And if you want it to be you know, a little bit shorter around the front, you can obviously work it square from the ear on. So you do it square from this way and then square from that way. And that will make it a lot more solid through the front. If you direct everything back, you're gonna get a slight point around through here. And that's cool too. It's all dependent on what you wanna create and the consultation that you've had with your uh, client with your model Okay, so just making sure I'm happy with the squareness of this believe it or not This is probably one of the hardest things I find people uh, doing is the baseline people think oh, that's the easiest It's actually a, I find in all the years that I've done education over the all around the world the baseline is one of the hardest techniques that people find to actually do but it's nice when you get that beautifully Cut. Now the reason why I'm not using my fingers is because when I use my fingers, I'm elevating the hair slightly higher and that builds graduation. So you want it to be at natural fall and at zero uh, graduation so that you don't create any much graduation, zero elevation, sorry, so you don't create much graduation. Okay, next section, I'm going to drop this whole area through in here. Okay, just going to comb that nice and flat. All right, and then I'm, first I'm going to bring everything back. Bring it all back so I can cut that. Whatever doesn't reach, which is this area, just leave for now. Focus mostly on the baseline, okay? That's what you wanna focus on first. Then we can work towards the front, okay? Same thing here, combing everything back and working it all towards the baseline, all right? Making sure it's all that natural fall. And I have pre-blow dried it for those who are joining. Um, and the reason why is because I want to cut it dry. Okay, so I've really just put Luster Lock from Joico, which is a protector, protects the hair. Her hair's pre-lightened, so it has natural texture to it. And we're just going through and cutting this uh, baseline first. Okay, so we're working everything square. I'm using my comb as a ruler or as a guideline, and then working that nice and square as we get to the corner. Don't worry about these bits for now, just leave that. If it doesn't reach the square guideline, don't cut it just for now. Work mostly and focus on this back area. Are there any questions so far, Ash? No, someone just said, not sure if it's an optical illusion, but the baseline looks slightly curved in the center. In the center, let's have a look at that. Let me just first cut this, and then I'll have a look at what they mean, uh, if it looks curved. So come back, yeah. So have a look, it's slightly, because of the blow dry, let, the best way to do it is to use your comb, okay? And you can see how square that is. Does that look um, like it's curved in the center or does it look quite square? How, how, how does that look, guys? Does that look kind of square? Maybe just a touch through in here? Thank you for pointing that out. Okay, let's have a look. It's got to be perfect. Okay, I think I'm happy with that. I see what you mean. It's because the blow dry is slightly curved there. 
but when I come and use the comb, it's actually quite square. Come back a little bit one more time, Ash. Stay there. Okay, always use the comb. Make sure you're completely happy with both sides. But just a little bit more through in here. There you go. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Better? Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, extra pair of eyes. It's always good to have an extra pair of eyes. Okay, do me a favor. Look that way for me. I've got her standing for a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, I want to be at eye level with, with the baseline. I think that's important. And now I'm just cutting that square so it just looks healthier. And so we do avoid that point uh, in here. So when we come to wave the hair, it's going to look very balanced and clean through this area. Okay. Again, if you want to bring it back, you get a bit more of a point here. I like when it's solid, just looks healthier. Just looks so much healthier. And making sure that it's connected to the back as well. So what you do, you use the top of the ear as a guide and then work that through. I'm going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So if you can look that way for us. Yep, perfect. And just really shaping that slightly from here and just cutting that and connecting that through. Now, before I move on, what I do want to do is just make sure it's balanced. So if you can look straight for me, and there's nothing wrong with having your model or your client stand up in the salon. Uh, sometimes it's a bit intimidating when they look at you so close. So, <laughs> so I ask them to close their eyes. Close your eyes for me. And that way you can focus purely on the hair without being intimidating, being intimidated by them or them being intimidated by you. I just want to go a little shorter on this side. I think it just needs that little bit more of a cleaner perimeter. And that already looks much better. Now, I don't just check visually. I also check technically. Be very, very detailed with the front, especially, I think the whole haircut, but especially the front. This is the part that they actually go and check when they go to the bathroom afterwards. A lot of the time they go, can I go to the bathroom? I'm like, yep. And then they come back saying, oh, it's a little bit shorter, a little bit longer. So make sure it's absolutely perfect. And then you can check for balance again and make sure you're happy with both sides. Okay, you can already see how much healthier. Isn't that amazing what scissors can do to hair? It can make hair look so much healthier uh, once it's cut. And that's why I recommend uh, for all my clients, even with Jessica, I was talking to her while I was preparing her hair. She goes, how often should I be coming? Because she actually trims her hair at home. And I said to her, you should be coming every two months, at least every six to eight weeks. And a lot of the reason why a lot of clients do not come that often is because they're scared of us as hairdressers. What do I mean by that? Because they're scared of us cutting too much off. And I think we need to have that discipline. You can take a seat. We need to have that discipline to be able to trim people's hair when they ask for a trim. Because if we go an inch or two inches or even three inches too short, that's like six months of growth. And so I think it's key that when we have a consultation to stick to what we discuss with our clients, a lot of the time what I do just to confirm what the consultation was is I'll trim their hair. I'll actually turn them around and actually show them the hair on the floor so that they can see I didn't cut too much off of their hair. Okay, so once we've established the baseline, how's that feel by the way? Healthier, right? Yeah, definitely. So much healthier. My stuck. What's that? My fingers they get stuck. stuck, exactly. So now, now that I've put the baseline in and it's beautifully balanced, I, I wanna start putting layers through the top and also around the front as well. So I'm gonna start firstly by taking a section around the front here. I'm gonna take a section, I think from about the crown, or just in front of the crown, to the edge of the brow, okay, for now. I just wanna start here first, because I wanna to start to layer this front area first. All right, so we're gonna tuck that behind the ear for now. Move it all away, keep your section super clean, keep it balanced because this is what really gives you the balance. It's like a designer creating a, a, a dress. You know, the, the, the balance is key. If you don't have a balance and discipline with the approach, it's not gonna look great. So I think with hair, you've gotta take your time and make sure you're completely happy with the balance and the technique that you're putting in there. The discipline there is so, so key. And this is something that I learned 
when I was younger. It was frustrating, to be honest. I would end up spending, you know, two hours on one haircut, learning each section by section. Was it frustrating? Yes. Did I have to build up patience for it? Yes. But it's very, very rewarding for me because now I understand technique, I understand over direction, I understand about building weight, releasing weight. It's about getting the foundational techniques, perfecting them, and then amalgamating them together to create whatever shape you have in mind, rather than just relying on hacking the hair away when it's dry. Okay, so I'm gonna start through here. I'm gonna start by taking a slight triangle section. This is the, the part that we're gonna cut, which is the shortest part for us here. And we've agreed that we wanna cut it around the lip level, is that correct? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start with leaving it slightly longer. I'm gonna do the chin level, okay? Because then we can have a look, it gives me room. Because if I cut it to lip level, it's dry, so it's not gonna jump higher, but I don't know exactly how she's gonna feel by cutting it there. Even though she's told me she'd like it at lip level, let's leave it just a little bit longer and have a look at it. Because you always give me an option to either keep it longer or I can always go a little bit shorter. Okay, so going to cut it from about through here. I'm, I'm, I'm point cutting, but you can club cut. It's personal, whether you club cut or point cut. But first I'm gonna point cut, I'm cutting this round, okay? And I'm layering it in, because this is the part we want it to flick and have that kind of like 70s vibe. The good thing about this haircut, guys, it doesn't have to always be worn into a 70s shape. A lot of like of what I've said is gonna be with the way we style the hair. Okay, it could also be worn smooth if she wanted to. So before I do anything, by looking around the front, that's kind of the length that it is right now. So it's a little bit longer. I think we can go a little shorter, don't you? Do you see what I've done? I've done it step by step. So I'm building confidence so that Jessica can trust me because it's the first time I'm cutting her hair. And we need to be that delicate, especially with clients that have come to us for the very first time. Let's not just bang, 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 rush them because we have another client. Hair is so important. Yes, it grows, but it's still someone's confidence. You know, if you go too short, especially around the front, people can be upset if it doesn't actually suit their face shape. So it's, it's good to be sensitive, it's good to be delicate, and it's good to constantly consult your client throughout the whole process of the haircut. A lot of people think, oh, I've done the consultation in the beginning, let's just go ahead. The consultation doesn't stop throughout the process. You're constantly looking in the mirror and consulting your client so that they are comfortable and you're bespoking their haircut to suit them perfectly. Okay, so we're going back in. I'm gonna go a little bit shorter because we can, and I think we, we could because it's gonna look really cute on Jessica's face shape. Okay, so we're going a little bit shorter. Same technique, working it round. Everything's elevated up. I'm still working technically even though the hair is dry. Okay, we're point cutting through in there and we drop it and we have another look. Okay, and have a look. It's exactly where her lip level is, which I love. I love that length. And when we come to style it, it's going to be obviously styled away from the face to give us that, that 90s shape. Okay, so from that point, I want to start layering the front for her. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to focus on this side first. And this is the part where we're going to be going shorter. Okay, so everything is now brought forward to that point okay and what we're going to do let me just make sure i can if i can't see my guide it's a little there, there's my guide okay so what we're going to do this is the part that's going to be brought forward and brought to the center so i'm directing and bringing everything to the center and then from that point i'm going to just do a little slicing to really reduce a lot of that length going from short to long because that's going to be the graduation around the front for me, okay? There's my guide, I can see it. I'm gonna just go from short to long and I'm gonna point cut. First slice and then point cut. I want it to be soft around here so that when it falls, it falls quite soft for her, okay? And point, I'm cutting into the shape as, as much as I'm cutting the length. So it's soft and that's the advantage I have when the hair is dry, okay? Let's just comb that. You can start to see that we're graduating this front area beautifully and softly around through in there. The last section through in here, gonna do the exact same thing and work it from short to long using that same guideline that I have. Any questions? Um, some people wanna know what scissors you're using. I'm using the Mitsutani Acro scissors. I think they're called Z Acro. These are six and a half and these are great scissors. I haven't had to sharpen these 
and I've been using them for over a year. Very, very good scissors. Highly recommend the Mitsutani scissors. Okay, there's my guide again. I'm going to work from that point and point cut. So when that comes to fall, have a look. It falls from short to long. Can you see that? Look, from short to long. So I've worked that graduation, but I've worked it through layering rather than just picking it up like this and cutting it. Now I will pick it up like this and cut it just to check the very ends. Okay, but the way I've cut it through layering is what makes it look so much softer. Okay, and this is just the beginning. I have all of this hair still yet to fall. Okay, all the hair is back here and it's gonna be connected through. Okay, so I'm gonna just comb that. Beautiful, look that way for me. Look at that, it's just, so, it's just soft. Beautifully soft graduation around the front. Okay, I did the exact same thing on the other side. Now, no one walks around with hair like that. She could obviously, but she's either gonna push it back or we're gonna actually put some wave in it and move it back. So it has this beautiful 70s flick through the front area. How are you feeling so far? And, and this is something I will say, this is what I do to a lot of the head uh, clients that I cut. So sometimes when you're cutting someone like this, they get a little um, cautious. Why? Because they think their hair is that short, but little do they know all their hair is actually clipped away. So when I show Jessica in the mirror, if you could just move, your hair is still all here. So don't, don't freak out, it's not that short. And that's what I do, I, I comfort them throughout the process. Okay, gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, and then we're gonna connect it through and then work with the layers uh, on throughout the top. So now that I'm working on the other side, body position is essential. Whenever you're doing over direction, which is what we did, we directed everything to the center, so you're working from shorter to longer, you stand on the opposite side. So when I was doing this side, I was directing everything towards me. Now I'm doing the other side, I'm gonna direct everything towards me from this point of view as well. So firstly, we take a slight smaller section so we can see our guideline. Directing everything to the center, okay? Making sure we can see our guide, which is there. I can see that. And we're gonna go from shorter to longer from that point. And I wanna also check for balance. So first I cut the length and then I cut through in there. Yes, you can slice, you can point cut. I'm gonna just do a little slicing just to really break that up for us and then connect that through as well. Okay, so it's soft all the way through. Now, I'll do the next section and then I can check for balance. Okay, next section will be everything directed over. All right, and then we're gonna just keep that longer first and then I'll go back in and have a little slice to it so it's got a little bit more softness and we're breaking that up so it's all the way seamless throughout the shape. Whether you point cut, whether you slice, it's totally up to you with what you feel comfortable in terms of your technique. We're never here to dictate to you guys what to write and what's wrong. I'm here to share with you mostly what I would do and then you can interpret that in your own way. And that's what makes us individuals and different as hairdressers. Okay, so gonna just bring that forward. Have a look at that shape. Gonna point cut that through and just point cut into that so it's nice and soft. I feel like it might be a little longer on this side, but before I judge, I wanna check. Okay, so just gonna grab the sides. That feels great, that feels great. It's actually through the corner a little, that's balanced there, that's balanced there. I feel like it's just slightly longer, like a, t a real snidge it through the, through this side. So I'm just gonna go in, point cut, and just soften that a little bit more. So it's absolutely perfect. And this, even though I'm cutting it in the middle, she can wear it on either side. Okay, so we're just point cutting that through and making sure it's perfectly balanced. Any questions, Ash? Great. Guys, ask me questions, because I love when you ask questions. There's no such thing as a bad question. All questions are welcome, so please feel free to, yeah, ask as many questions as you like. Okay, loving that, loving the balance. I'm checking for balance, I'm not just checking for the balance of the length, I'm also checking for the balance of the, the weight as well. Okay, so when you start to have a look, you can start to see the shape 
come to life. Again, it's blow dried straight, but once we put the wave in there, you're gonna get this beautiful 70s shape, which is what we're going for. Okay, now what we're gonna do is continue with the front area, and I'm gonna just connect that through a little bit more. So you can see there's a strong disconnection through in there. All I wanna do now really is just, I wanna keep a lot of that corner there, but I wanna just connect, and this is all the hair that's really wispy and very, very fine, basically dry. So we wanna cut that a little shorter through in here, and that's gonna give us a, just a beautiful shape around the front. All right, so. Is this cut for all face shapes? Um, I think this cut could be for all face shapes. What you wanna keep in mind is more the length. If, if she had a very round face, I probably would keep that a little bit longer around the front. So that's, uh, that's something uh, in terms of suitable suitability you've got to look at. Okay. So my guide stationary. The guide I'm using is the guide from the front here, and that's what we're gonna be blending in right now. Okay, so, working from this point, pulling everything up. That's my parting, so T to the parting. Okay, there's my guide. There's just really visually connect that through until we get to that corner. Okay, and you can see they're just wispy hairs. And this is good because this is what's gonna give us much healthier shape around the front. Look at that, just blended in so much better. Okay, if you could just keep your head straight for me. Let's have a look at that before we carry on. Make sure that that's absolutely perfect. Pick it up again. And just slide that through and it gets rid of those wispy bits. So when she looks to the right, you can see how beautifully and visually it's connected. I just want to clean that up a little bit. Stay like that for us if you can. So all I want to do here is just now visually just go through and just make that look a little bit blunter because this is very fine hair. Okay, and that's all beautifully connected. Can you see that? Nice and healthy and it's shaped. And again, she's not going to walk around with hair like that look around straight for me she's going to be pushing this back so when she pushes it back it just opens up this whole area so much more okay now that next section i'm going to do is just make sure that there's nothing hanging over so i go slightly further back okay and then i just comb that forward you can see there's a few little bits through in there so we're going to just go through and cut that if you can just keep yeah that's straight perfect Okay, so literally going through and just cut that through so it's nice and healthy and we're getting rid of all of the broken wispy bits around the front. Okay, the best way to judge that is to comb it flat. You could elevate it, which I did, but then when it's sitting flat, you can really see which hairs need to be cut and just make sure that you cut all the ones that obviously are hanging over the guideline. So there's a nice balance from top to bottom, okay? Cool, one, one more hair bothering me, cool. Let me look at the mirror. Okay, that's lovely, look that way for me. Let me just see that little bit there. Okay, there's that, just a little bit there. Mirror, the mirror never lies to you. So it's always good to look in the mirror and then eliminate what stands out that doesn't flow with the line that you have. It takes time, but hey, this is what we do, this is what we love doing, perfecting people's hair. That looks great, I'm happy with that. Can you, like, can you see that? Yeah. Looks nice, eh? Mm -hmm. And it's exactly a little bit longer than your lip level, but that's fine, because when you Relax. flick it, you'll have that length. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool, nice, nice. Okay, so let's do the other side. I'm just gonna put the air on, so just show, show them the back as I'm quickly putting something on. Okay. Okay, so other side, we are going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to take a section to the ear. Okay, we're going to blend that through. Okay, so holding the hair up and like T to the parting. Okay, there's my blend in. So we're going to hold the hair like so and just really slide that. 
through. So it creates look at this shape that see how soft and shattered. That's what we want to create. No one wants chunky blunt, blunt lines around the front. That shattered softness, I think, is key. So once we comb that again and we see how it's sitting now at natural fall, because I did the elevation, I can now just go in and soften that. Now, even though I'm cutting bluntly now, because the hair is so fine, it's not going to be too chunky at all. It's still going to have that softness, which is what we want to create. But the way we began around the front is really what set us up to create that flow around here, the way we graduated that through layering. That's key because that's the part really that gets really heavy and chunky. And that's why we layered this section here. When it comes to this area here, just kind of look, as it gets further back around the recession area, a lot of this hair really doesn't grow. They're little baby hairs that you kind of I like, like that you work into little shapes around the front. But this section here is what gets heavy and that's why we layered that first area first and now we're just connecting it through so it looks shattered and soft all the way through here. Okay, and that's the best way to do that. Natural fall after you've put the shape in and then you just tidy that up. Okay, make sure you've got a nice balance on both sides. So, looking in the mirror, look that way for me. Lovely. Making sure we're happy, that's beautiful. See how it's working from that point all the way down to the corner that we have here. I think that little bit needs to just go, stay like that for us. Just this little bit here. Okay, cool, love that. And just gonna now look and check for balance. So look straight at me. Always check for balance so you're happy with the shape, not just visually, but also technically. Okay, and technically it needs to be checked with your fingers and make sure you're happy with both sides. Look at that, it comes exactly to the same point. Okay, and that's what you want to create, that balance on both sides. Cool, okay. So I'm gonna just check the next section and then we can begin with our last section which is layering the hair through the back. That's the only part we haven't done yet. And then we can start styling. How long have we been on, Ash? How long do I have? Does it tell you? Okay, we've got, we've got to do it in one hour. All right, so let's just check that. Cool, okay, I'm, I think I'm happy with that. If you want to turn around that way one more time for me. Beautiful. Again, kind of at natural fall. The mirror never lies to you. And I think hairdressers really don't use the mirror enough. And I think it's good to, to see what you're doing in the mirror so that you could actually uh, make sure it looks good on, from both angles. Because sometimes we can look at something so much that we can lose focus. All right, happy with that around the front. Okay, how are you feeling? Good. Good. Okay, now we want to just layer the, the back area. So the front area is pretty much already layered because of what we've just done. I'm just going to take a section from the crown area, maybe a little bit further back. All right, and working this area here, sorry, because it's so heavy. Uh, I might actually, if you could stand on the opposite side, sorry, Ashley. Okay, so this is the area that I want to work a little bit more. From this point, we're going to cut that so it's got a bit more layering, short to long. So this is quite classic. We do this quite often, but we've gone further back. So we've started from the crown, and that gives us that little bit more volume that we're looking for. Next section, we're pivoting all the way around and working through this whole area. Make sure that you can see your um, guideline, which is there, okay? And we're just working that through in there. And then we're point cutting also into the shape. So we're keeping the same angle and, and point cutting so we got that soft seamlessness to the shape. We don't want any weight lines through here. But I don't want to overlayer it where I lose a lot of the the strength through the perimeter. I think sometimes when we lower our elevation, like let's say I pull it out like this and I, I cut too much off through this area here, it starts looking too wispy around the ends. And I don't want that. I want an element of weight to the shape. So doing the same thing here, you can see the hair where it's needing to be cut and just cutting that on the guideline, short to long, and then we're chipping away into the hair so it's all nice and healthy. Okay, and we're doing that all the way around. So you've still got the strength in there, but you've got beautiful layers. Okay, and we're doing it until the hair doesn't reach anymore. So last, this is probably the last section. Not sure how much is gonna come off, but it's always good to check it 
so you don't leave any loose hairs lying around. Okay, so you've got a few more hairs through in here. You're going to chip away at that and then everything should be directed back to that point. So this is the part behind the ear. Everything should be directed. A lot of it probably won't reach, but I'm gonna try just in case. All right, and really it's, it's, it's all actually nicely cut there. Just wanna strengthen that line up, especially through here. Okay, and then we kind of just chip away a little bit at that because it's fine hair anyway. So I've still got the corner, which is what we want. On through the front, have a look, I've still got the corner. I haven't eliminated the corner and I've still got the strength in the corner as well, okay? Just wanna make sure that I'm happy with that. That's beautiful. All right, you happy? She's happy. Next, we're gonna go through the other side, standing on the opposite side. Any questions? Not many questions today. I think I'm covering it all, sounds like it. So you can see my guide. See, the hair is really tired where it's where it hasn't been cut, you know. So just going to cut that and then cut into it so it's all nice and healthy. You know, point cutting is something I do quite often, um, but it's not necessarily, it doesn't necessarily always have to be point cut. I sometimes blunt cut depending on, you know, what I'm creating. But with here, I just want it to be soft and seamless. At this point, because I'm going to curl the hair, I'm going to put my curling irons on. So they heat up really nicely, so we can begin curling straight after, because that's really what I want to show you is the, the curling. And it's really simple, it's classic, but you're kind of making it a lot more wavier around the very front area especially, okay? And then you're brushing it out in a beautiful 70s shape. And that's what I want to make sure I've got enough time for. Okay, so, work. and if I don't have time to show you the exact finish, at least I can show you the technique. We'll be taking pictures, doing little videos, um, and that will be all posted on Joico's uh, Facebook and Instagram page as well. But let's hope I get enough time to be able to do everything for you today. And that's why I've cut it dry. If I had to cut this wet and then blow dry, it just would take too long to show you the whole technique. But this technique is simple. It's just a matter of doing a simple technique well, making sure it's balanced and you're following your guideline. You know, people think, oh, you know, something that's more advanced or, or uh, modern or even using something that's a bit more um, from the 70s or the 80s can be very tricky. For me, I think it's all about doing something simple but keeping it clean and doing a simple technique properly, making sure you're happy with the balance and you're checking everything. Last section, we're directing back to behind the ear. A lot of this won't reach. I'm sure a little bit will reach. And that's the little bit there. You can just see that from the line. We just cut that off, and then we're gonna point cut through. And do you prefer to cut this dry? Yeah, love cutting this kind of haircut dry because I can see right away what we've created. All right, so before we dry, I'm gonna check the balance. So I'm just gonna take a section, have a look. Just take a section from one side to the other. All right, like so, and just lifting everything up. And what we should get is a bit more of an inverted shape slight inverted shape so just gonna comb that up nice and high okay and that's what we got through here it's exactly balanced from there all the way through so short shorter through the center and a little bit longer on the corners all right come have a look at the back so even if we don't curl it she's got something very healthy she's got layers but she's still got the strength through the baseline as well okay cool so now we're going to put some product in the hair all right, so we're gonna have just, uh, let's have a look. I've put a lot of protection in the hair already. And what we're gonna do now is work with the curling iron. If you could hold that for me. Um, okay, so we're gonna go through in here. Start, uh, the front is key, the front is key. Um, as, as um, uh, with the what we want to do is we want to make sure that we have um, the, the the hair that's curled around the front but we want it to make sure that it's curled around the back also but the front is the real focal point through here so what we want to do we want to firstly just clip away the front area and I'm gonna start with the front because that's I think one of the most important parts for this shape through in here um, I'm gonna use a Mason and Pearson brush Okay. 
comb all that, brush all that first. This is, a lot of people know about this brush, it's the Mason and Pearson, it's a fantastic brush to use. And this is the part I wanna focus on. We're gonna curl the whole shape, but I wanna focus firstly on the front. So we're gonna clip away the back for now. Okay, and just move that away by brushing it first. Okay, and just putting a clip. Can you hold that for us? Thank you very, very much. Okay, the next one, just clipping that away. All right, so let's focus mostly around the front. I should have more clips. Great, two here. Okay, <clears throat> so we're going to start firstly with putting, yeah, that's a good section there, and just clipping that away. So, thank you. The whole 70s vibe was all about everything curled away from the face in a, in a kind of voluminous way. So, we're grabbing that hair, we're making sure we've got the curling iron on, and we're literally just wrapping that around the hair. Obviously being careful around the ear, and holding that for a good 10 seconds. One, two, and you're slightly on an angle. So it's not horizontal, it's slightly angled. So it's really kind of aggressively away from the face. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Drop that and just let that, you can pin that if you like. A lot of people, if you want to really set it, you could just put that in a pin and clip and, and literally just pin it away. I'm going to drop it because of the time that we have, I wanna make sure that I actually do as much as I can because if, if I keep pinning it, it's gonna take too long. So let that cool down, let it cool down. Hair needs to be cooled down as much as it needs to be heated up. So next section, I think we could do this in two sections. So I'll just do another one more before I do the last section on top. Okay, bringing that up, making sure that I have all the hair short to long, I brush it out first. Okay, make sure it's nice and clean. Jessica, let me know what time it is on your phone. I just need to make sure it's all under an hour. Okay, great, about 15 more minutes, hold it. Great, okay, so doing the same thing here, holding it with my hand like so, grabbing the curling iron, making sure that's smooth on the cuticle, like so, and then we're grabbing the hair and literally going around. And holding that on a slight angle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and drop. Some people do 12 seconds, some people do less. Again, depends on the heat that you have and the hair you're working on. So if someone's gonna ask how long, it all depends on the person that you're working on. But the idea is to get the, the, the bend close to the root, like so, okay? And just let that go. And once that's brushed out, we can have a look. Now there's a little bit here that I just wanna curl a little bit more. And I'm just gonna do that, just to seal the ends a little bit, okay? Great. Last section, which is this one through here, okay? If you can just like I swap that with that. Now I want a little bit of volume through in here. I think it's important. That 70s shape is creating that volume. So I kind of, what I do, I kind of just drag the roots a little bit here for that extra volume. Okay. Take your time. And then you could see the volume we have already through in there. But then I've also got to make sure it's, the, I've got to make sure the cuticle is smooth. So just gonna brush that gently without killing the volume that's in there. And this also has gotta be done close to the roots. Which curling iron are you using? I'm using the Bioonic curling iron. Okay, and that's also done here. Have a look on a slight angle and working about 10 seconds through here. These are Bio Bioonic bio curling irons. Okay. How did you cut the hair away from each other? Lock. For those that um, just join and Joyful. Uh, Luster Lock is the spray and Joyful just gives us a bit more volume. But really a lot of the texture that's in the hair is because the hair is pre-lightened. Obviously pre-lightened hair 
gives us texture. So that's kind of really mostly what we've been working with rather than overloading it with too much product because sometimes product can actually weigh the hair down. Um, so you've got to use the right product to give volume and protect the hair because at Joica we're all about healthy hair and the protection of hair. And before you put any heat in the hair, it's very, very good and important to protect it. So doing the exact same thing, have a look. Not, I'm, I'm right-handed, but on the left side, I want it to look like the right side. So I'm gonna now put the curling iron in my left hand and doing the exact same thing through in here and working around. So you're almost mirroring the other side with the way you're curling the hair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And you're just going to drop that. Again, let it, I can, you want to hold it for a couple of seconds? You can. You can also set that and pin it. I'm just going to drop it because of the sake of time. Um, I'm letting that cool down a little bit and just letting that sit. I've come close to the roots so it has that wrap. So you're going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to split the hair. I did, I did one section. How many sections I did? It? One, two, three. So I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side. I'm going to split this one into two. Okay. And do the exact same thing here. So we're going to wrap that around. Brush this side. Can I have the brush, please? And do the exact same thing here. Okay, the front is key. The back we can curl. And that's really easy. We're going to do the same kind of curl around the back using the, the same technique. Okay. Working that around on a slight angle. And you can twist the hair. It's fine. You're going to be brushing this out later. Oops. One, two. Okay. So one, two, same thing. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And letting that cool down. All right. And just letting that drop. The reason why I count is because I want the same heat, the same amount of heat on the hair so it's the same on both sides okay so this side slightly bigger section doesn't matter I just want to get this so I can show you guys if you can just give us that again let's get the volume through in here all right make sure we get that volume by just using the curling iron and that will give us that little bit more volume through this top area especially the front area through in here okay and we can use later a little bit of rise up from Joico that gives us a bit more volume as well. Okay, just coming that nice and smooth. I'm going to do the exact same thing through here. So using it in my left hand. All right, and then working around. Now the hair's a little bit shorter, so you just got to make sure it's all in your hand. Sorry, can you hold that for just one second? Thank you. Give us the brush. Okay, yep, hold that. Thank you. Make sure you got it all in your hand and you're going to wrap that around the, the, the heat of the curling iron. The layers are much shorter, so you've got to be careful. And if you have to go over it, you go over it. But for now, I just want to hold that for 10 seconds. 7, 8, 9, 10. Okay, let me just hold that out. Now, some of the ends I'm going to have to do again, just through here, which is fine. You just go through. And make sure you seal all the ends so it's got that flick away on both sides. And again, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but it has to have that same wave. Hold that for us one more second. Now, on this side, because I did a slightly bigger section. Hold that for me. Let's try that one more time. If that doesn't work, you're gonna have to just wet the hair again, because once you've dried the hair, it's, it's, it's very difficult to reheat it in the shape that you want it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's see if that's probably a bit better. I, I should have taken a slightly smaller section, to be honest. That is much better. 
And I'll just do this one one more time as well. Hold that for us. Sometimes I get so technical because I'm teaching that I actually forget about the visual aspect to it. Hold that for us. All right, this one. And just rolling that around so it's got the ends in the hair. I'm holding the end so it doesn't slip out. Okay, I don't think I've got time to do the back, have I? What time is it exactly? Yeah, I've got seven minutes. I wanna, I wanna start styling this so I can show them. I'm gonna show you guys that this is the front area and then I'm gonna continue when I'm done to do the back area and we're gonna uh, show you some pictures and show you the finished result on the Joico uh, Facebook page and Instagram page. Okay, let's have a look. Cool, hold that for us. All right, so it's, this side's cooled down. So once we've got that side done, we're literally gonna brush this out. It, it's not gonna look incredible right now, but please, please, please uh, keep an eye out for the pictures because you need all the hair pushed forward so you can get that 70s volume. But I've just shown you mostly around the front and then you literally just brush this out. And you brush it in the direction that you kind of want it to be, so which is going backwards. Have a look, Ash. So when I push that forward, you could see that it's gonna have more of that 70s vibe through here. So it all flicks back. Have a look at the front, from the front. So this, I'm gonna be pushing, can I just see the front, Ash? So this is gonna come more away from the face, smile. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna just keep working at this and continue with the back. But that's the kind of vibe that we want to create, more of a, a 70s shape. Now, there's no, all the hair is still back here. Once that's waved and we get all of that, you're going to get this volume coming through here. And that's what I'm going to continue to work on. Um, so, but that, that gives you the idea around the front. And if you want even a little bit extra volume, you can always back brush slightly. So let's just say we want a bit more volume through in here. Use your brush and literally back brush slightly and then comb in the direction that you want it to be in. So look at that, it gives you that more volume through there. Okay, same with the top here. You can just brush the hair first up, back brush and then smooth the cuticle so it's a lot more smoother and you've got that. And then later we can just brush that all together and it gives you more of that 70s vibe because it's going to be flicked away. Okay, and that's the kind of vibe you want and you want to kind of like push that forward. And that's the 70s shape. So have a look from the profile, if I can just see in the mirror. That's kind of the, the, the 70s vibe that you want. Obviously not finished, we need to do all of this hair, but because of time, it's very, very difficult to show you both the haircut and the styling. However, I'm going to continue working with the styling throughout the back area and then we're going to take some pictures. So. Thank you so much guys for joining us today. I wish I had more time. We've got to keep it an hour for the edits and for the reposts, but I'm going to continue working this side, working all through the back, and we're going to take some videos and some pictures for the after. So again, thank you very much. I hope you guys enjoyed it.